It all started with this, the RG350M, a beautifully crafted metal handheld by Anbenek. Just really wanted one of these devices. I got myself this now two years ago now for Christmas. Absolutely loved it. And as you can see, it kind of took over my life. And uh, last year, I didn't have enough vice devices and I didn't feel like my opinion was strong enough, you know, educated enough to give a good year-end video, best devices of the year, whatever. This year, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you the best device of 2023. I'm gonna look at these and I'm going to say price versus performance versus the X factor versus if I gave this to anyone, would they enjoy it? Let's get into it. So we're gonna talk about these two devices first. Um, so the pros and cons of these, the RG35XX is available today, always. Miu Mini Plus, not so much. Um, the RG35XX is very well built. Miu Mini Plus, kind of debatable. Um, but the X Factor definitely goes to the Miu Mini Plus. I love the, the plastic on here. Um, I really like these buttons. I like this D-pad is nice and mushy. So for retro systems, this is really good. This is a lovely, like a mini Game Boy and it's, it's pretty affordable. So uh, yeah, out of these two, I actually give the win to this, but this is more available and there's a new one out with a more powerful chipset. So uh, yeah, maybe check out the RG35XX. I also owe a lot to the RG35XX because I brought out a bunch of videos on it. They all did really, really well. It's my top performing video, over 100,000 views. So. I owe a little bit to this device, so love you, 35XX. Um, let's talk about the RG th B30 by Power. This device has a square 720p screen. It is, it is exceptional. Um, it plays square systems. It plays Pico 8 very, very well. There's not much to dislike about it. It shakes a little bit, but that's about it. You know, it's got nice joysticks. Uh, the D-pad's a little bit sharp, but nothing to write home about. Clicky button slightly, but overall, pretty much an exceptional device and it comes with Jealous, ready to roll. If you bought this for someone for Christmas, even though it's a very niche device uh, because of the square screen, if you gave this to someone for Christmas, um, they would be able to use it straight away. NES is also good on here. So this, this is, spoiler alert, this is my number two device for the year. I would say this is the second best device of 2023 in the retro gaming space. Okay, let's talk about these two uh, because these are two of my favorite devices. You can see I think all of these are my favorite devices, but all, all, for different reasons. So the RG450M is good because it just has a great in-hand feeling. It feels great in the hand. You can see Duolingo's on you because I've actually used it as my personal device for a while. I've loaded Digest Show, but you can just simply use the RG launcher. Um, but I've also put um, Gamma OS on here. So this wasn't, I wasn't too sold on this device. The Android build wasn't great. There was just something about it I wasn't enjoying. I put Gamma OS on here. It even improved performance. So I've played God of War PS2 on here. I play a lot of Mar Super, new Super Mario on here. And I've really started to enjoy this device. It feels really good in the hand and is very pocketable. Now again, and then some people don't like the joystick over here. But now the RP3 Plus, the reason I love this device so much is because just the feeling in hand, this blue color is just wonderful. I like the screen because you can play the whole PSP catalog on this lovely screen. And there's just an X factor with this device that I really like. Retroid really put a lot of thought into the, their devices. Well, I say that the button layouts on the outside, the function buttons are just horrific. Like there's a home button here, there's volume buttons here, there's um, start and select up here, um, and there's the power button. It's just very, very odd. Uh, but other than that, I just really love this device. But I made a sensational video about Wolf Den comparing these two devices, and I can't, if, okay, this device won even with the metal casing on it, because I put the metal casing on it, but over the few last few months, I really grew to dislike that metal case. I've rehoused it back into this plastic case and it's now, I really like this device again. I went ran through the house just now and I was said to the kids, where's my blue device? So, because I just love it. Anyway, so Retro Pocket 3 Plus. This actually came out last year but it's still one of my favorite devices. Then the Retroid Pocket Flip. This is where Retroid really started to prove that they are a thoughtful company, and I really like that about them. This device is just, 
it, it just shows passion. You know, the fact that it flips, there's no reason to make a device that flips. They've done that. Now all sorts of other guys are starting to look at making them. Um, I know Miu is making one. I'm pretty sure Amber Nick are, are, are scrambling to make a flip device. Um, it has the same screen as a Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, which there's no issue with that. Um, I really like it for playing DS games. It can obviously play 3DS games. Um, PSP is lovely on here, but um, those sort of retro Nintendo games are really nice on here. Pros and cons, some people really don't like these sliders. I don't mind them, grown to like them. Um, I know Tech Dweeb likes them. One of the downsides is that these shoulder buttons are stuck under here. So what I do is I use these for, I map these for gameplay and I map these for like saves, loads and saves. I save on this side and load on this. The one thing is though, your fingers, got, it's difficult to get your finger in there um, and it doesn't really register press like there. <laughs> so even like there, you can, there, like if you put your fingers there. So it's, it just works, but that is a bit of a downside. Overall, definitely like one of my personal favorites of the year is this device. It really got me excited when the launch came and uh, it's just a lovely divorce device. Over time, I have gotten disappointed that this watermelon color wasn't as advertised, but you know, I still dig it. Great device. Then the RG405V. The RG405V got me through a really bad flu this year. I sat in bed for, for quite a long time and uh, I played New Super Mario um, on 3DS. I did, I did a whole PS2 test on here with my, um, for my video. And I think I started playing God of War PS2 on here, uh, but then I switched over to the RG405M for some reason. But anyway, this device is cheaper than this. It does everything it does, it, you can get Gamma OS for it. I've got Gamma OS on here now, which I really like. I've installed Digest Show, but like I say, Anbernix Android system is pretty good. You can get going pretty quickly with An uh, Anbernix Android system as opposed to some of these. And I would say if you're a beginner, go for Linux rather than Android because Android can be tricky to set up. Um, anyway, this device, the, the pros are that it it is big. The con is that it is big. Um, it's really nice to hold in the hand. It's got very similar design cues from this new Arc um, with, the, with the ridges on the back. I really like that about it. It's really nice to hold. And this is a lovely device to travel with, even if it, though it is a little bit big. So we've got the X55 and the Trim UI Smart Pro. Now I compare these two because they have similar chipsets, but right now the performance is, is better on the X55. This device is nicely made. So if you're looking for like a pretty device as a gift, this is definitely the way to go. If you're buying it for, for someone who doesn't mind being a bit of a hobbyist, this is probably the way to go. Although it comes loaded with Jealous, with, uh, it has Wi-Fi, it can update over the air, um, it does art scraping. So it's pretty good for like non-tech users as well. Very comfortable, but the thing about this device is the buttons are horrifically clicky and if that bothers you, you definitely need to go for the Trim UI Smart Pro. But yeah, had it not had those clicky buttons, it would have been my number three for the year. Then we've got the very new Anbernic Arc. I'm busy with my in-depth re review right now. This one is very ergonomic. It's very niche though, with these six buttons and only a D-pad. It doesn't have joysticks, so that really limits like who can enjoy this device. But that being said, if anyone is a I would say the thing with this device, if anyone is a Sega fan, if you've got someone in your life who loved Sega back in the day, like Sega Mega Drive, Sega Genesis, buy them this device. Out of all of these, they will love this one the most. And then I do want to give a quick mention to the RG Nano. I know a lot of people love to hate this device. I think it, I hope they make another iteration of this and just perfect it because if they can get I don't know if they get a Wi-Fi chip in here, but if they can get Wi-Fi in here and get a proper music player going, like for instance, if they could get it to sign into Spotify or something like that, this would be an incredible little device. The problem with this device is I wanna give it to a family member, but the second they open this, they're gonna start pressing buttons. For instance, it says, I think it says select. Press select to get into the menu. Select actually takes you to like the time setup. You've got to press start to get into the menu. So there's these like weird quirks that make it hard to use. You could end up in the back end, which is where you have to play music, but all the games are in the front end, which is the very easy part to use. So if they could just develop the music side 
in the front end and not let the user get to the back end, this would be an exceptional device, but that really holds it back. But other than that, cute little metal device that can play up to PS1, like crazy. And then we've got the Retroid Pocket 2S. Now this device is, I feel, a culmination of what Retroid have been doing. This is a Retroid, this is the, 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 the one before this, this was the next one, like very thoughtful device. Then they took an older device and perfected it. And I really appreciate what they did there. They took the old Retroid Pocket 2, the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, and they just made it perfecter, you know? Um, it's got a good grip. They've, they learned from this device, they made the grip better, gave it these little lips so that it doesn't slip off. So I often actually use the grip with this device. Um, and then they put in these awesome joysticks. This matte clear black plastic is just lovely. It feels good, it looks good, really, really nice. Um, it's got these double mold, injection molded buttons, which they do get a bit like clackety clack when you play, but um, really do feel good. Um, they're not too small. They are small, but they're not too small. And then it's got the dome switch D-pad. So some people don't like the fact that, that it's dome switches and, and, and rubber membrane buttons, but you get used to it. It's got analog triggers here. And this is very pocketable. You know, this shape and this design, I really, really enjoy this. The only downside with this device is the screen. In 2023, I re it's not unacceptable, but you know, if they could have just brought the screen to where, even where the, the bezel reaches, if they could just have stretched it to there, and they got a slightly bigger screen for this device, it really would have been like perfect. There would have been absolutely nothing wrong with this device. The downside of this device, um, is the setup. Um, there is no really easy way to set this device up and that really does hold it back. And you know, when I started this, I said one of the factors to making it the year of the device is that I could take it and go, Merry Christmas, but you can't do this with this. I can't give this to a cousin or a friend uh, before I've done the setup on it because they will get very frustrated. That being said, I had a video idea recently and I'm going to take one of my retro devices and um, explain like I am five, you know, that whole Eli five thing um, and do it with one of these devices to either prove myself or the comments wrong that these devices are very difficult uh, to set up. So that being said, what is the best device for me? Um, this is a personal subjective thing, but you know, informed by my, my two years now of reviewing these things, being obsessed with these things, what is my best device of 2023? And you probably already guessed, it is the Retro Pocket 2S. The reason being price versus performance versus the X factor versus mm, setting it up for someone who doesn't know how to set these up. That is the one slight downside, well, actually a big downside compared to the rest of these. But this, you know, if anyone said to me, I have $100 to spend on a gaming device, a retro gaming device, I would always point them to the Retro Pocket 2S.